Transportation in America is an utter wreck, literally. But Mayor Pete is more focused on his ridiculous progressive priorities, like how our roads are racist. The transportation secretary once again, trying to satisfy the woke when asked about car accidents. There are a lot of reasons uh, related to discrimination, related to uh, the, even the ways that roads are designed and built. Who has access to uh, a safe street design that's got crosswalks and good lighting? And who doesn't have that access? That can drive disparities, and we have a, a responsibility to act on that. You know, Greg, I, I, I'm not even going to ask about whether roads can be racist. I'm going to save that for the next person. But... Given the fact that Buttigieg struggled with black voters in 2020, the question is, is this his way of trying to win them over? And as transportation secretary, do you think he's done anything on this? It has to be. That has to be the reason. Because, look, the, this assumption can only be taken seriously if you, if you work with, like, one variable, which is yes. what the left often does. And so their variable is always going to be race. The, thing, the, the reason why there are all these accidents and fatalities got to be race. There was a study, I, I uh, wrote about it a while ago, uh, a couple years ago, where they compared um, blacks were pulled over more, at much higher rates in America than Asians for speeding. They were getting speeding tickets, and it turned out that what was called racist was actually there are more young black drivers in America than there are Asian drivers. Young people drive faster, get in the most accidents, often why they have the highest insurance premiums. But if you just ignore that one variable of age, there are more younger blacks than there are younger other groups. And guess who's careless in cars? Young people. As for road access and lighting, I mean, I don't know. Like, there's a chicken and egg thing going on here. We talk <laughs> about the food deserts. Like, you know, the yeah. food deserts, that's why, that's why minorities don't get, a, don't get their nutrition. And then you see looting, and then that's like, wow, why are, is, whose fault is this? <laughs> you know what I mean? The stores don't want to be in neighborhoods anymore where, yeah. where people are getting treated like in San Francisco. Dana, why is Pete focused on this? I mean, with all the train derailments and all the problems at the airports and everything else, why this? Well, I think one of the things that we sort of forget is that Mayor Pete is not on an island. Mayor Pete is part of a cabinet who reports to President Biden, mm -hmm. and this is a President Biden priority. So this is being driven from the White House. And who's in charge of Department of Transportation at the White House? Susan Rice, who runs a domestic policy council. So this is a priority for them, and that's fine. You can list your priorities. What I think is interesting is that you don't also have then the Secretary of Education coming out with an absolute bullhorn to complain that every urban school district mm -hmm. does not have children who can read and do math at grade level, and they pass them on anyway. And so why do you have this problem? It's like the broken windows theories of streetlights mm -hmm. or crosswalks. If what, these things aren't working, whose fault is that? Mm -hmm. And local governments are to be responsible for that, but they get a lot of federal money. So part of this is, okay, then Mayor Pete, White House, Mr. President, what specifically are you going to do about it? What is the targeted answer for any of this? But I get back to the issue of education. I cannot believe that that is not considered the number one mm -hmm. five alarm fire for this administration and anybody who's running for president right now. Uh, well, what about car accidents that happen in other parts of the world? I mean, in other countries, uh, would he say that they're racist as well? That's a great question. Let's broaden the sample size. Let's broaden yeah. the pool. <laughs> you know, Judge, I thought I wanted to come into this segment and just have a good time about the idea of racist roads. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually want to say something else. I want to say this. Racism is real. Like, it's a, it's a statement that I think perhaps a lot of us who rightfully point to reason don't perhaps make enough. Racism is a real issue in the United States of America. But I believe that idea is undercut more yeah. by people who attempt to explain every disparate impact by one single variable, as you point out, and less by people that deny the existence of racism. If you water down a concept to its absurdity to racist roads, you have lost a willing listener. You've lost people willing to understand racism is a problem. It's an interpersonal problem, I believe, an individual problem. And you have lost the ability to win people through reason and persuasion, through this stupidity. That's a great point. And, and what do you think, Jessica, about this? I think that it's more complicated than just one variable, of course, but it's a real variable that he's talking about. And the history of it, so this goes back to the National Highways Act of 1956. And when there were changes in zoning laws, because finally we came around to the idea that blacks and whites should be able to live together, what the government did is they built highways 
through the middle of major cities to de ended up destroying them. So like I Interstate 375 cuts through Detroit and there are a number of black communities that are essentially cut off um, just out in the abyss there on the other side of the highway without access to the same kinds of things that whites have access to. We talked about this as well. The uh, the difference in outcomes for black communities or communities of color versus whites when it comes to pollution. There was a huge study in 2021 about the air quality in communities of color and blacks worse than other minority groups and certainly worse than whites suffered from air pollution due to construction that's done in the places that they live. What these communities? I'm curious because I always hear, I've heard this. That's not, that's not I, important. Listen, okay, I, that's okay. I just was curious. What, what do cities? you want me to? I, I have city, because we always just, we're told how bad it was as if it never gets better. 1954 is how many years? 70 years ago, 60, 70 years ago. Okay. And we always have to go back. We're always looking backwards. We always act like the sins of the 50s or the sins now. Why haven't why hasn't your party improved this? Why, why, why is he talking about it now? Well, wait, wait, they, what city is this happening in? Is it a democratic city? What have you, your party, done instead of lecturing us on language or, or taking $800 million that was meant for the homeless and making it disappear? What, what, what are you doing rather than telling everybody that we're racist? Uh, first of all, I did not say that. Please I know, take I know, I meant you generally. But don't, because <laughs> me is the only person sitting here, and I, I took <laughs> extra care to make sure to make this point in a thoughtful way that did not fall into the trap of this is just racism, mm -hmm. but to talk about the, the fact that there are systemic challenges to black people in this country that whites do not face because of where they live, because of the actions that our government took. So what have Democratic representatives done for people suffering from this? Well, they were the ones that actually got the Flint water, water crisis paid attention to. It took too long. But that was all Democrats Thanks. fighting Flint. Not a big deal. Huge deal. They're, I mean, kids are drinking lead-infested water. What's a bigger deal than that? Um, there are parts of rural America, too, where people don't and have I access. And I sat here when East Palestine was ravaged by those chemicals, and I talked about how it was an atrocity. Okay. So don't do that. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.